Good morning, my wild and beautiful friends. Thanks so much for coming by. Today we're making gingerbread houses. We have got a gingerbread recipe, a royal icing recipe, and the easiest way to put these little guys together. Keep on watching to see how we do it. Okie dokie guys, let's get started with our gingerbread. We've got some brown sugar in a saucepan on low heat. I'm adding a stick of butter and some unsulfured molasses. We're gonna let that start to get nice and melty and gooey, and then we're gonna add some yummy seasonings. We've got cinnamon, allspice, ginger, a bit of sea salt, and now I'm going to grate in some fresh nutmeg. You can absolutely use ground nutmeg from a container, but this definitely ups the flavor and the aromas that happen when you bake it on up, in my opinion. Once everything's looking nice and melty and gooey, we're gonna take it off the heat, stir it together, and pour it into our stand mixer bowl. You can of course use it just a large bowl and your hands or a spoon or a hand mixer. I'm adding in six cups of flour here. We're not gonna add any leavening ingredients. I wanna keep this dough from rising so we get the perfect shape on our gingerbread houses. I'm also gonna add some plant milk. I've got some oat milk here. It's just what I had in my fridge. And I'm also going to add about a teaspoon of vanilla and that's it. We're just going to add our paddle attachment to our stand mixer and mix it up until just the dough barely combines. We definitely don't want to overwork it. Once we got that beautiful brown gingerbread looking dough, I'm just going to dump it onto some saran wrap in a large disc, kind of shape it a little bit and wrap it up as best I can because you all know that I struggle with the saran wrap. <laughs> situation. I'm going to wrap it up. I'm going to put it in the fridge for about a half an hour and then we will be ready to roll out our dough. Alrighty, it's been about a half an hour. I've got our surface lightly floured, our dough lightly floured, and we're going to start rolling out our dough. Today's rolling pin substitute is brought to you by our handy dandy cocktail shaker. <laughs> we're going to roll it out until it's about I'd say between a fourth and a half inch thick. You could probably go a little bit thinner with this dough. I just wanted to be sure that the structures were really solid. And I'm just gonna press together whatever kind of comes apart as I roll. Get a nice big sheet so we can cut out our shapes. Now, as far as gingerbread shapes go, you can Google gingerbread house templates and find so many different free templates. I found this, I just Googled it, it's from Gingerbread Street. I will link below the pattern. The pattern does tell you to expand it to larger sizes, but I decided to just go with what printed and make a few mini gingerbread houses because then I could do some variation on decorations and have a little bit of a village. So I'm just taking my pieces of paper that I've cut out and a skewer and I'm just kind of mapping out what I'm gonna cut out. Seemed a little easier than cutting it with this dough. I'm gonna do that with all my patterns. I'm gonna try to get at least three gingerbread houses. I also have some mini gingerbread men cookie cutters that I'm just gonna kind of cut out around the edges where we don't use the pattern. So once all your shapes are cut out and your dough's used up, we're gonna put these on some parchment paper on a cookie sheet, and I'm gonna bake them in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 17 minutes. I'd start checking at about 15. You just want them to be nice and golden brown and set. You don't have to worry about them expanding in size or distorting in shape with this recipe, which is really wonderful. So just make sure that you don't burn them, <laughs> which I have done. These little mini gingerbread men do cook a little faster. So I pulled those out at about 15 minutes. They're so stinking cute. Look how cute that is. <laughs> then once everything's baked, you're just going to put them on a cooling rack until they're cooled down enough for us to assemble them. Okay, on to gluing our little beautiful gingerbread structures together. All you need is some granulated sugar and a saucepan. Please forgive my dirty oven top. I am embarrassed now that I'm watching this. I need to scrub these or switch them out. <laughs> so anyway, you're just going to 
melt your sugar until there's no more crystals and it's this beautiful brown color it happens pretty quickly i've just got this on medium heat once all your crystals are gone you're going to just use this as a glue you're going to dip the sides of your gingerbread house in it and then glue it to the other side etc etc i'll show you here i've got my gingerbread houses kind of separated by house because there's three of them be incredibly careful when you're using this if you're doing this with kids i would recommend you do this part the sugar is quite hot can and can definitely do some burning on your little fingers the sugar method though has definitely been a game changer in my gingerbread making experience <laughs> i don't know about you guys comment below if you've ever had a serious royal icing gingerbread disaster <laughs> for whatever reason i could never really get my gingerbread houses to stick together with royal icing i think it's mostly because i'm impatient but this method works so well it sticks together so quickly so i'm just taking the sides of my gingerbread house dunking them and placing them onto that larger side that has the roof point and i'm going to let those dry up it happens quite quickly and then i'm going to do it with the other three since i've got three or two more three total gingerbread houses and then i'm going to kind of just like go back to each one and add the next piece as the other pieces dry or cool i guess that's probably a better way to say that the heat right now is on low now that it's melted i don't want it to get too crazy hot so I'm just adding those two little pieces, trying to figure out what the heck I'm doing here. <laughs> Get the right angles so you don't drip on yourself. Be so incredibly careful here. And once you stick it, it kind of sticks. So some of these are a little wonky, but we're gonna use some frosting and some fondant to even them right back on out. So don't worry. So once all of our gingerbread houses are assembled or your entire one larger gingerbread house is assembled, we're just gonna let these cool down on a wire rack while we make up some vegan royal icing that is so simple to do. So all you need for this royal icing is half a can of aquafaba. So I'm going to drain out my chickpeas and then use half of the cans worth of the juice from it of that aquafaba and then i'm going to use some organic powdered sugar i'm using organic because that way i know that there's no bone char used in the making of it I'm just dumping in the whole bag which is about three and a half cups here and we're just going to whisk it together until it's nice and glistening and velvety looking we're going to scrape down the sides of the bowl a couple times just to make sure all our powdered sugar is incorporated. But it's pretty incredible how similar this is to royal icing. It has that same exact texture, has that same exact glisten that comes with having royal icing. It firms up perfectly. So you can use a pastry bag, of course, but I am going to use a reused Ziploc here. Reduce, reuse, recycle, right? I'm just going to plop in about two thirds of the mixture. I'm reserving a third to use to attach some fondant that I'm going to add for some of the decorating elements. Once you've got your icing in here, you're just gonna swirl that bag shut and we're going to cut just the tiniest hole in the corner so you can pipe out really thin lines here. Now this is where you can get crazy you get whatever kind of decorations you'd like i found some fondant at our local craft store and some green food coloring and i'm just coloring this i want it to be kind of like a minty green I'm going for a little bit of a retro vibe here but you do you get any kind of candies you're thinking i like the idea of fondant because i can kind of do colored walls or a colored roof we're just going to roll it out really thin and use our gingerbread house little templates as a guide to cut out either the roof or the sides or door and i'm going to kind of just do something different for each house and have some fun i've also got some candy cane that i'm going to crush up and some different colored sprinkles that i've been using for our christmas cookies and our hot chocolate bombs if you've seen my previous videos i'm kind of just 
using what I've got at home and I think it's gonna work perfectly. And all you do is add that royal icing to the back of your fondant and press it on to the gingerbread house like so. If you're gonna do the side of the house, if you've got an uneven shape, you can just use an angled spatula to even out the shape and lay the fondant on top and it'll make everything look really nice and even. So it's a nice little band-aid for any imperfections in your little gingerbread houses here. I'm just using a bit of water to smooth out the edges on our fondant. It's got a little bit dry here. I'll probably go around it with some royal icing to kind of just frame it up a little bit. But get crazy. Do whatever is fun for you. This is the best part, in my opinion, the decorating part. Get your kids involved. Have them, you know, chuck some sprinkles at things. Eat a bunch of sprinkles. <laughs> I'm just going to fill this in here with icing. I'm trying to kind of make it look snowy. So once I've got it filled, because there's a decent gap since our gingerbread, I kind of made it quite thick. I'm just going to fill it in, make it look like snow and icicles. I do find that the key to making a decent gingerbread house is letting go of things being perfect. <laughs> you can definitely cover up so many mistakes with icing. I find that making snow or icicles or little dots or scalloped edges really kind of bring everything together and make them look nice and kitschy and cottagey. I love the color of this fondant. I loved adding just a little element on each house so you can still see the gingerbread coming through. Just decorate until your heart is happy. And there you have it. We have got ourselves a mini vegan gingerbread village, I guess. I just made that up. <laughs> I hope that these little houses give you some inspiration and give you a place to start with your own vegan gingerbread house. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you're staying safe and healthy. Can't wait to talk to you soon. Cheers.